Part two, we're talking now about, by the way, James from Love My Plus, my beauty supply. Um, now we're gonna talk about what you can do to maximize your litter. And we're talking specifically about timing. The other things that we talked about in the previous video, things like semen quality, we're not gonna talk about those again because um, you know, they're, they're obvious basically, but the timing is not obvious. And so let's talk about what's going on in your dog uh, as far as progesterone levels. Um, <clears throat> so what we've got here is a graph of progesterone level on the y-axis from 0 to 25. This is in nanograms per milliliter. And be aware of the fact that if you're in Europe, then we are talk about nanograms per nanomole. And those numbers are 3.18 times bigger. So if you had a dog that was at a 10, uh, if you measured it in nanograms per milliliter, it would be at a, a 31.8. So just be aware of that. If you're in Europe, you can't use these numbers. You've got to use, you've got to multiply them. You've got to, you're going to have bigger numbers. All right. This is first signs of blood. This is whelp. Uh, and this is approximate. It doesn't mean that whelp's going to happen 71 days after you see first signs of blood. But it's likely that it's going to be kind of close. All right. So this is, this is first drops of blood. It's not swelling. This is when you see the first drops of blood on the ground, we're kind of count that as day one. And what's going to happen is, is the progesterone level is going to rise very slowly for the first five to six days. So let's have a look here. Let's go day seven. So to about day seven, this level is going to, after day one, day five, the progesterone level will be about a one. It goes up pretty slowly. And once it gets to a one, it goes up about one point a day. And that's going to get you to a level of five at about day nine. So here's that. You can see there's an increase in the, in the rise. And that is a five on an IDEX machine. We're going to call that ovulation. But remember, it's not every dog ovulates on day nine. And the only way to know this is to look at the dog's behavior and do a progesterone test. So what do we expect to see when the dog ovulates? Well, start off with a few drops of blood that's fairly red. It starts to lighten up and get more pinky or vanilla or strawberry in color around the point in time that the dog ovulates, around day nine. And after that, it really goes up rapidly. It goes up about 70% a day. So <clears throat> two days later, where this was dog was at a five, the day after this, it would be at an eight, on day eight, that day, day 10. And the day after this, it would be something around a 15. So you can see that we've now got this rapid rise in progesterone level that continues up to some number that's going up to 30, 40, 50, 60 off the chart. And you can't see it because <laughs> you can't see it's up on the board. But the, the, what we're talking about now is timing. So we don't really care about this back end. We'll talk about it briefly in a moment. What we really care about is trying to pinpoint basically ovulation. We'd like to know when this dog is, at, the next day the numbers start to go up rapidly. That tells you that you're at ovulation. Different machines will give you different readings, so it can be a bit difficult sometimes. For instance, on an IDEX machine, that level there is typically around a five. On the fine care machine, the one that we sell, and we'll talk a bit more about this here in a moment, this machine right here that you can buy from us, which I swear by, it's about a seven on that machine. If you're going and someone's got a mini vitus, a vet's got a mini vitus, those numbers are gonna be dramatically higher. All right, but the important thing is it doesn't matter what machine you've got, you're going to see this rapid increase. That there's the knee right there. You want to try to get to that point because you want to see this rapid increase. All right, so if you're doing a regular vaginal AI off a VETS IDEX machine, we want to do our first AI around a 15. And on that's for an IDEX. And for the fine care machine, we want to do it uh, fine care. On the fine care, about a 17. That's for a vaginal AI. For a surgical AI, and we like to do this twice, by the way. I like to do a breeding here, and I like to do a breeding a couple of days later. And then I'd like to come back in. This is the first AI. This is the second AI. And I like to do a test again, test at this point, to make sure the numbers are, if it's an IDEX machine, above a 20, above a 20, or if it's a fine care machine, above a 22. 
That makes me believe that I've got my job done right. Two AIs, two days apart, with a test done after the second one to make sure the numbers are standard. The reason to do the second test is because numbers, especially in younger dogs, you think you're at the right place, but if you go back and test it, you found that the number had come back down. And that this dog was doing this crazy, you, know, you thought you're in the right place, you tie and tie it off this, you say, I'm gonna breed two days later. But what's really happening is the dog's done this. It's done some funky stuff, and it didn't, wasn't ready to be bred for another five, six, seven, eight days. And without doing another test, you don't know that you're in the right place to do the AI. So, especially in younger dogs, especially if you've not seen this normal rise, things have been the dogs procrastinating on those progesterone levels, absolutely go do another test when you think you're finished to make sure her numbers are 20 and above. Okay, so if we're gonna do a surgical, what will we do a surgical on? The answer is it's a day later, and typically we're gonna do a surgical on something around a 25 to a 35. So that's for a surgical or a transcervical, high numbers. And that, typically that's a one-time shot, especially for the surgical, it's a one-time shot. Um, what I like to do, by the way, is I like to do a, if I can do it, I like to do a, uh, the first one is a vaginal and two days later do a TCI. That is a really great way of doing it. Um, it's not always available to you. And, uh, but anyway, that, that's a good way of doing this. Okay. Um, let's just talk briefly about what, we're gonna get this all off the board now. And I wanna talk just briefly about what happens with the singleton puppy as far as the back end of all this. So, <clears throat> We think that we got things right, but in fact we didn't. So we came in and we did our first AI right here on the 15th. This is our first AI. And we thought everything was good. So we are now gonna time that off our AI 61 days and we roll forward 61 days. And that then gives us our, and by the way, if you look at the math here, we did that on day 11, and 61 11 gets you to 72. That's why I put 71, 72. Okay. So this is going to be what we think is, we think that that is our, is our C-section date. That's what we expect, right? But what happened, but unbeknownst to us, this dog didn't do that. It did this. Wonky stuff, and then it went up. So we got the, we should have AI'd here. And it should have been 61 days from that date and 61 days from that date if that was in fact day let's just make that day 17. it should have been 61 days from day 17 and that gets us to 81. so we are now in fact the correct 61 days gets us out here somewhere and that is the time that we're sitting twiddling our thumbs, wondering why that dog didn't have puppies. So that was 17 versus 11 is six days. So there's a six day window, the dog's coming six days late. Six days late. And the bad news is, if you time this off that, and a singleton puppy, you likely have puppies that don't survive. They probably have slick faces and, and uh, not, not, not survive. So it's super important with these singleton puppies is to find out where you are and what you can do is you can do you know there's all kinds of things you can do but you know you can do a progesterone test and make sure the number is less than uh, uh three less than three on a nanograms per milliliter um the problem is is the progesterone levels sometimes never drop properly on singleton pups so and it's not a good way necessarily time you can do fetal heart monitoring where you can listen to the puppy's hearts to make sure their heart rates are normal and okay because the stressed puppies may have to be taken immediately in that case but you've got problems here Getting the timing of the C-section right. So, you know, it's a difficult situation with a single puppy. Get it right on the front end, don't have problems on the back end. Get it right on the front end, have a nice litter. Get it wrong on the front end, get a small litter or no litter at all. Um, I think that's probably it. Um, hope that helps. And, uh, you know, here's a plug for us. I mean, look, this, this, is, this, is the, this is really the fix for it. It's the fix for both ends. It's the fix for getting the timing right, it's a fix for the back end. And the great thing about a machine like this is it's 50 minutes to get results. You do have to draw blood. You do have to have a centrifuge to send a blood down. You, you spend about, see if I've got a test strip in here, and I don't. 
You spend about $9 a test, so it's cheap. You don't have to spend time going to the vet. You don't have to expose your dog to other sick dogs that have been in the vet's office. You get your time in your C-section right. So what are you going to pay? By the time you've bought a machine, you've bought a centrifuge, you've bought a box of test kits, you've bought some blood collection stuff from us, you're in it for about three grand. But it, the pound of puppies that we produce, a single puppy, makes up for that and some without any trouble. I've been running that machine now for three years. I love the machine. I should have had it much sooner than that. It would have saved me a lot of money. So um, you can go to mybritishsupply.com if you want to find more information on the fine care machine. We're an authorized dealer, by the way. I think we're the biggest dealer in the southern part of the United States. All right, there we go. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Hope it was useful. Thanks for watching as always. Please subscribe if you liked it and uh, be good to your puppies. Bye. I just want to add a bit here. I do talk about the progesterone machine as being a way to time C-sections, but not all of you can do that. You don't have a machine, you don't have a vet that can do it. I understand that. So let's just talk a moment about the other ways to time C-sections and what you want to see on behavior. So uh, we talked about this graph where we talked about <clears throat> slow rise, medium rise, high rise, this being around ovulation around day, day five, uh, excuse me, ovulation around day nine, uh, breeding the dog around day 15. That's what we talked about. So how can you get this timing right if you don't have the luxury of having progesterone levels? Well, what you're going to see is a dog that is just starting to go into heat drops blood and typically that blood will start to thin up in color around the point it's ovulating. So what you can do is you can take a napkin and put a, a white paper towel, works really well, put it up against the dog's back end. And what you're looking for is a color that starts to look more like this, a kind of a pinky color, not, not, not this dark red color. That sign signifies that she's not ready yet. This signifies that she's probably about to ovulate and it can be this color to almost a, a vanilla or a clear color. And if you don't have any other way of doing it, then if you can introduce the male, the female to a male and see how the female behaves, not how the male's behaving, because that's very varied, how the female's behaving. What she should be doing is, when she's getting close but not ready, she should be standing for him, putting a tail up if she's got one to the side, that's called flagging, generally sticking a buck up, butt up in his nose, and when he gets up on her back or tries to, she walks away, or she turns around and snaps at him, she's not having any of it. When she has, has ovulated, uh, and it's a couple of days later, by the way, we leave the two days between ovulation and breeding because the eggs have to be mature enough to be fertilized. At that point, she knows what's going on. For the most part, she will stand for him and allow the dog to get up on her back and not walk away. It may she may not do it the first, you know, you've got the two dogs together. There'll be, some, it's kind of a courtship here thing goes on. The two dogs may face each other off and they may dance around each other with their ears. Oh, it's really cute. And, and you, know, you can see they're very excited. And then she gets to the point where she turns around and lets him get up on her back. And that lets you know they're probably in the right place. And then the next thing is, if you do the AI then, which I'd recommend that you do, is that you see how far the AI rod gets in and it gives you an idea about how open she is. I'm gonna get an AI rod. So I'm off camera here talking to you while I grab an AI rod. Well, unfortunately, I don't have an AI rod up here. But anyway, uh, what you want to see is, is, is when you're doing an AI on a dog, <clears throat> and I've got videos on this, so I don't want to go into any great detail here, but you'll put the AI rod, let's say it's a French Bulldog. The AI rods that we use are eight inch AI rods, eight inch AI rods. They're very skinny and, and fairly flexible, and you can really get them in through small holes. What you're going to find is, is that you're getting about that much of the rod every time. What you want to see is you want to get in that much of the rod. You want to almost get the entire rod, all the entire rod into the dog. And you may have to work at this. You may have to twizzle a thing around, have your finger in there, moving your finger up and down, gentle pressure on. All of a sudden, after you've been doing this for a minute or two, it goes in another inch and a half. You just got through the narrowing and you got into what's called the vestibule. And that's where you'd like to be. And that gives you a good indication that the dog is at the right place because you probably will not get that last inch and a half in if the dog's not ready. Um, right, so then there are other things that you can use to do progesterone. Drominsky is a little kind of a wand-based electronic product with, a, with numbers on it that you put in there. I used to have a Drominsky, was not a fan of it, used it for a few breedings and sold it. Didn't think much of it at all. So not a fan of Drominsky. There are some strips that you can buy. I see these on Amazon where you put it up against the dog's back end. 
I think that's a, not only is that not working, I think it's completely misleading. I would not use that at all. They're dirt cheap, but that's the only good thing I can say about them. Because as far as an indicator of what's going on, I think they basically are no good at all. Uh, vaginal cytology, you can go, and I've got videos on this, you can do, take a Q-tip, stick it up in the dog's vulva, twizzle it around, roll it out onto a microscope slide, stain it, look it under a microscope, and then you're looking for, you're not looking for this, for cells that look like fried eggs, you're looking for cells that look like cornflakes. That's what's called cornified, and it will go from all of this to all of this when she's ready. So a dog that is 100% cornified is probably, so that's, vaginal cytology is a way that you could do this yourself if you had a microscope. Um, but it's, it's, it's not easy to interpret this, and um, I've been doing it for a long time, and I just don't do it that way. But, but for me, the useful part about vaginal cytology is if you're not sure what's going on with the dog, you can very quickly in a few minutes determine whether she is, which end of the scale she is, if she's not even close to being ready to be bred or she's, or she's to be bred or you're past it. So uh, it's useful from that point of view. All right, so that was just that bit I'm gonna add in then. Hey, All thanks right. for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here. And certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye. Thank you.